Welcome to Computer World in Conversation. I'm Shane Schick. IBM employs thousands of employees, but only a select few, 73 in fact, are among the IBM Fellows. This is Big Blue's biggest technical honor, and it offers an honor for distinguished achievement in IT in all kinds of areas. In the most recent group of IBM Fellows that were inducted, there was one lone Canadian, Bob Blaney, and he works out of IBM's offices in Canada. We're fortunate to have him in our studio. Thanks, Shane. So, you worked on a number of different uh, areas, so compilers and Java and, and more recently next generation systems. Can you talk at all about uh, the kinds of work that you've done that might have influenced uh, the development of the products that you know, IBM's customers in Canada and IT departments might be using today? Yeah, completely. Um, yeah, I've been with IBM for over 20 years and the um, you know, large part of my career has been spent doing compiler work, which doesn't sound like it's uh, very relevant, it's kind of in the plumbing, but what it is, is it very much at the interface between software and hardware. And so among the software organization in IBM were, you know, myself and the team that worked on the compilers are among the select few that really collaborate closely on getting the systems right. So that would be our power systems and our mainframe or system Z uh, systems. And when I say getting them right, I mean we really do collaboratively work on the processor design, the system design, make sure that everything works optimally across the stack. So and that, that's probably the most visible contribution of, of most of my career is in making the systems right. You know, IBM has uh, obviously developed a, so much of its technology internally over the years, but it's also in the software group particularly, uh, acquired so many other companies that have added you know, new features and functionality. Mm -hmm. How has that helped in some of the work that you've been uh, trying to do? Well, that's a great question. I mean, we've changed a lot as a software business. In fact, I joined the company before we had a software business. So a lot has changed in, in 20 years. Um, but clearly every new acquisition, particularly the large acquisitions, really make a big impact on IBM. Uh, they impact my job principally in sort of the, the breadth of workloads and applications for which I, I care about optimizing, right? right? So I work in an area now known as workload optimized systems. And there's two parts to that, the workloads and the optimization, right? So, so when we look at a Cognos, for instance, or we look at an SPSS or any of these new acquisitions to IBM, they represent huge new opportunities for us to optimize the whole stack, software plus hardware. What are, what are some of the, the goals and the work that you're doing around workload optimization? Uh, they are uh, quite uh, varied. So uh, at their most basic level, what it is, is taking a look at the systems that IBM offers, Power and System Z and our, our System X systems as well, and looking at the software that's most relevant to our customers and making sure that when combined, they give the customer the best value possible. Mm. So that's sort of the baseline. But from there, we obviously do a lot more work with um, special optimization of the system. So as I said before, we're very collaborative with the system design. So once we understand, again, to use Cognos as an example, kind of patterns of computation that are in that software, mm -hmm. we feed that right back into the, the processor and system design. So the next time a system comes out, it's that much better. Right. So uh, very much um, that level of optimization. My current area is called next generation systems, so it's not just about this system, but what's coming. And so I spend a lot of time with IBM research as well and with academic colleagues on figuring out what's coming up in two, three, four, five years and how we can get ready as a software stack for all of those changes. Well, can you give us any examples of what you might see coming down the road that people aren't thinking about that you're already kind of working on? Sure, absolutely. Um, yeah, over the last couple of years, one of the topics that we've been spending a lot of time on is uh, solid state disk storage. So this is just coming into the enterprise from most customers' perspectives. It may not even be in a lot of data centers yet, although there are some that have adopted it quite aggressively. And what this represents is, is really a huge leap in performance for storage, but it's tricky to use. You know, it's, it's an expensive layer of storage, so you can't just replace all your disks with uh, solid state. On the other hand, um, you know, the performance is too good to pass up. And so what we've been doing in the software stack is understanding how we can use a combination of solid state and regular disk, and so it requires optimization of database systems, operating systems, and so on. So that's a that's an example of something that's kind of in the emerging space that uh, that we spend a lot of time on. You know, we're, we have a lot of our uh, readers who are uh, experimenting, or at least looking at cloud computing and how they can you know re-engineer uh, their data centers. How will workload optimization you know contribute to some of the efficiencies or performance gains mm -hmm. that we might see from from moving into the cloud? Yeah, I mean that's a big focus area for us currently, and I think for the foreseeable future, we're gonna be very focused on how do we build systems that give customers the most flexibility and the lowest cost for provisioning into cloud, whether that's private or public cloud systems. So a good example there is how we're working with uh, power systems and how to aggressively ramp up the density of our deployment of applications to the platform. Mm -hmm. So 
with the help of things like our Power VM hypervisor and virtualization layers, we're able to get more and more and more applications without sacrificing any quality of service on the transaction rates or response times. We can optimize more and more and kind of squeeze out more out of that same box out of the customer's dollar than they otherwise could. So that's probably the best example. Yeah.